Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm not, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe. maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about a big question out there in a lot of people's mind as far as the prep school world goes, and that is how much does prep school cost and are there scholarships? First, before we start this, I need to let you know the difference uh, between some of the categories we'll be talking about today. There are two types of institutions out there that you can go to to play basketball. Um, One, there are basketball academies out there, and these are uh, places you have to pay to uh, play in a program. Uh, it might be a program associated with a small private school, and they're they're quite affordable. A lot of these have shut down over the years. A lot of them are starting up uh, to take these schools' places, and I, there's a lot of them to keep track of. For this conversation, I'm not going to be talking about those academies uh, because their prices are pretty fluid. I will be talking about bona fide brick-and-mortar prep schools for this conversation. And that includes schools that have been around for a long, long time. Uh, I, I mention this all the time when talking about prep schools, but there's one in Maryland named West Nottingham Academy that actually was founded in 1746, which is 20 years before the U.S. Uh, had the Declaration of Independence. So these are schools with some staying power. They've got uh, full cafeterias, full administrations, dorms, gyms, weight rooms. They're established, and they... Um, they're, they've been around for a while, and they'll, they'll most likely be around for a lot longer time. So for this conversation on how much does prep school cost, we will be talking about these brick-and-mortar prep schools. So first, when we're talking about these schools, um, are there scholarships? Well, not really. Um, and let's break it down into the two types of financial aid situations schools deal with. So the total cost for prep schools is between 38000 and 65000 Now, this is the fall of 2020. Those numbers are each year going up a little bit. And there's also an outlier, IMG Academy, which can cost up to $85,000 a year. Okay. Now, there are two ways to break this down. One is financial need-based, and the other is merit-based. And let me explain that. When you apply for a prep school, a parent, uh, and both parents, are going to have to fill out a personal financial statement. This is similar to what kids fill out for college financial aid, but they have this broken down now in its own website for prep schools. And it's called PFS, which stands for Personal Financial Statement by SSS. So this is a website where families will have to fill in their tax returns. They'll have to mention all of their assets, kids in college, certain situations, liabilities. And after they fill this out, uh, about 72 hours, it will email back the family a number that this software program has come up with. And that number will state how much a family can afford to pay to go to this school. If you're a family that has a lot of money, this number won't matter because you have money to pay for full prep school tuition. If you're a family that has very little means, this number will come back and say you have to pay a small amount, usually less than $10,000, sometimes less than $5,000. It's a case-by-case basis. The, the, The hardest part is usually for middle class families to where the number might come back and say, hey, you can afford to pay half. Well, half a tuition is potentially $32,000 at a school. And for a middle-class family, that could be more than they can afford for prep schools. So each situation is different. But until you fill out that that PFS statement, uh, it's going to be hard to know what a prep school is going to see on their end that you can pay. So there are some prep schools out there. And to include a couple, uh, Exeter. Phillips Exeter Academy, Andover. Uh, Those are just a couple examples of schools that just look at that number that the PFS statement uh, comes up with. So if it comes up that you have to pay $45,000 or that's how much your family can afford to pay, that's the number some of these schools are going to go off of. And there's not much wiggle room on that. Okay, so these are schools that are financial need-based. Okay, Um, the other side are schools that will look at that number And then they will also add merit, too, if you qualify for it. So let's give some examples of merit and why a school would give it to you. Well, if you ever walk into a school's 
hall or chapel or chow hall. Uh, chow hall is a military term for dining facility. Uh, a lot of them will have flags up of all the current students and where they're from, whether it's from different U.S. states or different countries from around the world. And schools will give merit aid to kids from areas they do not have represented. So whether that's from a Western state, maybe, or Alaska, or whether it's from countries in Europe or Asia or South America that, that, that they don't have represented, they will give money to a kid to help diversify their school more. Because remember, these schools are competing with each other for a lot of top students. And if one school can say, hey, we've got kids from 75 countries, and one school has kids from maybe 40 countries, well, the one with 75 countries looks more diverse, and that might appeal to more families. So they're constantly trying to diversify the school, and that's why if you're from an area called an emerging market or a place that's not represented, you can get money for that. Secondly, if you play sports, coaches usually have money that they can uh, allocate towards certain players. Um, that comes in handy, too, if you're an athlete or a multiple sport athlete. Um, you check a lot of boxes there. Next, academics and test scores. If you have a good GPA, if you have good ACT, SAT, or SSAT, they might give you money for that as well. Because when they have brochures and uh, information on their website about the average of their student body, if you have a high ACT grade, you might help bring up the average of the school. And remember, families look at this. Families look at the ACT average from prep school A versus prep school B. If it's a 30 ACT average at one prep school and a 25 at another, the logical conclusion is the school with the 30 ACT average probably has higher academic students. And maybe as a family, you want to go there and be surrounded by that. So schools will give money for that purpose. Uh, next up, language. If you are multilingual, they'll usually uh, give you more language because that means you're probably pretty culturally diverse. And extracurricular activities too. So think it's still a thing for college applications, but you want to be in a lot of clubs. You want to do more than just have good grades and play, be good at a sport. You want to be a total package. That is the same thing for the prep school world. Uh, one example I'm going to give is a girl uh, that was placed this year in a prep school in New England. Um, and she uh, is from another country. She played four sports at a high level. Uh, she had excellent grades. She also, um, spoke multiple languages, was a member of a minority group in that country, and she wants to be a doctor. So there she checks off a lot of boxes, right? Um, is an athlete that plays multiple sports, set, speaks multiple languages, has good grades, and also does a lot of community work, and she is a minority. So that's a, that's a very diverse person there uh, as far as the prep school is concerned, and she paid less. She paid a very small amount to go to prep school. Also, her family did not have the means to do it either to pay $65,000. So I don't want to give her number away, but she paid only four figures to attend a school that cost $65,000 because she checks up all those boxes. Okay. Another example I want to give is I helped a D1 player, a kid with D1 offers, uh, find a post-grad school uh, in New England. And uh, he had good grades, I think about a 3.5. He was a D1 player with D1 offers. He was a minority and he came from a single home family where his mom did not make much money. And they filled out the PFS statement and it said they could only pay $4,000. That's all he had to pay. And he went to another $65,000 school. Okay. Um, another family I worked with recently um, had a lot of wealth. And to them, the, the, the price was didn't matter. They wanted to find the right fitting school. So if the families have that luxury, then they have a lot more options too. Um, Unfortunately, that's one of the combinations. That's one of the things you have to have if you want to have more options, but it depends on how well-rounded you are. The better you are at your sport, the better your grades are, the more well-rounded you are, and then your combination of that with finances can help determine which schools you should reach out to and how many are going to be interested in you. Okay. When asking about scholarships, these schools we deal with don't offer scholarships. Okay. Um, some might give you more money, but they want something called skin in the game. So let's say you're going to be an NBA lottery pick. Yeah, some schools might give you scholarships, um, but a lot of the brick and mortar schools might make you pay at least $1,500 to have skin in the game. What's skin in the game? Skin in the game means you're putting up some money and not just freeloading on the school. Okay, If you put a little bit of money in, um, that means you have invested in the school at least a little bit and 
you might be less willing to transfer right away if something uh, doesn't go your way. So skin in the game um, is something that most schools require if they're going to give someone quite a bit of aid. So my suggestions for this, if you do want um, to make prep school more affordable for you, um, and we're talking the merit schools now because the financial need-based schools, that's all determined on your family's finances. But if you want to get merit money, it helps to have higher grades, higher test scores, be good at your sport, have extracurricular activities. And let's talk about extracurricular activities real quick. Um, there was the old adage that you could be in 10 clubs and that would look good to a school. When I used to work as a liaison officer for the Air Force Academy, we weren't as concerned as much about the number of positions you had at a school or number of clubs you were in. We were more concerned about you having leadership positions, right? Because anyone can sign up for the Latin club, sit in the back of meetings and not even participate. But if you're a leader in these clubs or in these uh, community events, well, now you're getting real world training for what it's like to be uh, a leader. And a lot of schools look at that. Uh, another example is I had a kid this past summer who was a good basketball player, um, had a decent amount of money to go to a school in New England. And I said, do you do anything extracurricular at school or volunteering or, or with clubs? And he said, no, I don't. I just do basketball and study. I said, okay, interesting. Well, that's fine. He goes, but there is one thing. I do run a clothing line out of my basement um, and I have my own e-commerce website. Does that count? And I said, absolutely, that counts. That shows initiative. That shows business savvy. Um, it shows you being able to do IT work, buy a screen printer, market, all these real world things that a prep school loved. And this prep school that he committed to actually got him hooked up with a, uh, an alum that, that, that was a founder of a large clothing company out east and he was going to do an internship there. So my point is there's a lot of ways to do it, but just the more diverse you are, uh, the more merit money you should be able to get from a school. So um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Again, my name is Corey Heights, I'm the founder of Prep Athletics. You can go to www.prepathletics.com. My contact information is on there if you have more questions, but I hope that helped a little bit. So thank you very much for tuning in and stay tuned for the next episode.